Thank you so much, Julian, for joining me today. I'm very excited to be having a chat with you. Um, the lockdown library was really just an idea that I had because we were all really trapped and libraries had closed and we didn't always think that we had money to spend on books and I knew that there were some great people out there like yourself who would generously give their books to people and um, so I reached out and fortunately we got you in the lockdown library um, so I know I've known you for a little while Julian um, although we've only met a couple of times in real life um, but I know that you are a videographer and you have a really interesting background do you want to tell us a little bit about your background before we start with the book? Okay, so I was a videographer, but it, look, look, I mean, the, the basic story is I did really well at school, if you don't count learning, right? <laughs> and so my, it's a, my biggest surprise more than almost anybody else, one of my earliest careers was an army sniper. Uh, it's not what I planned to do, uh, but it taught me so many important things. And one thing I do want to mention here is it taught me this idea that simplicity leads to reliability, which leads to a greater chance of success. And that has infused everything I have done ever since. But, you know, that view through that narrow scope was not the one I wanted of the world. So I ducked and dived and weaved, became what I wanted to be, which was a photojournalist. And I worked for ABC TV and National Geographic and BBC and Discovery did that for two and a half decades, went to amazing places, but the people in front of the lens and their thinking really influenced me. And at the top of my game in television, I walked away because I had this big idea I was gonna change the world. I took this idea into the world and it was a commercial failure. And my TV career had sailed off into the distance and I had to reinvent myself. So the natural career progression, army sniper, globetrotting cameraman, magician i know it's weird but that <laughs> led me to having a youtube channel which in its time did well had 30 million views and 140,000 subscribers the reason i tell you that story is i know video intimately so i had mm. decades behind the camera and now i've had well over a thousand videos presenting in front of the camera and then I looked at what business was doing and I went, wow, you know, video is such a powerful communication tool. Why isn't uh, business using it? And so I did a little bit of a deep dive into that. And I realized that, you know, the reason people don't want to do video is because 21st century video, the way we use it, think about a smartphone. It's got two, two cameras, one that points that way and one that points back at you. And that's what 21st century video is. It's about you being on video nowadays mm -hmm. and people hate it. You know, like people hate, hate uh, uh, public speaking that whole idea, those stories. Well, video is even worse because you have all those physical uh, emotions and feelings that you do on stage in front of people, but you also have to watch it over and over and <laughs> over again. And that was one of the big barriers. So that's how I got to doing what I'm doing now, which is helping business get in and use video. And, yeah. it, was a, yeah, and it was a process of teaching them like a new way of doing it. Because just yeah. pushing buttons, yeah, you know, you get a smartphone now, you press the red button, you can make a video, what's hard, what's stopping you? So obviously it's not the technology. So it yeah. had to be something else. And that's where I you know, dived in and realised it was about getting people's belief, their heart in the right place yeah. and their head in the right place so that they could see how they fitted in and what the new future of video was. Get the head yeah. and the heart right. And I found out that the button pushing becomes a whole lot easier for people. Because you're right, theoretically, doing videos today is easy. There are apps out there, there are easy technology that we can all use, but it is just getting over ourselves and using the actual devices that we've got in front of us. Yeah, so and that's tell hard. Me, yeah. Tell me about the book then. What prompted you to write the book? So the book is called Get Video Smart. I love yeah. the title. So what inspired you to write this book? So uh, going back to like uh, business needed a new way of doing it. And I also looked at what the marketplace was asking for. And, you know, the, we, we, we've lost as a global society, we've lost our faith 
in a lot of large organisations and institutions. Uh, governments have let us down, churches have let us down, banks have let us down, and we're looking to each other more, this human-to-human -human connection, to get our information. And at the same time, AI, artificial intelligence, is like dehumanise the workforce. So when you look at what people, how they want their information, they want truth and honesty. And this it's a bit of a hackneyed term, but authenticity mm -hmm. in their videos. So I look at, well, if that's what the marketplace is asking for, what is business doing that's not providing that? What they're doing is a 20th century mindset. As soon as you say video to business, you know what they think of? Oh, we've got to get somebody in. We've got to outsource our video. And yeah. look, you're going to have to do that for a little bit of it. But the problem with production companies who make videos is they make really good videos and they're polished. And it's exactly what is turning off the market. It's, what, it's not what they're asking for. So what inspired me to write the book was SMART videos. Get video SMART. SMART is an acronym for simple, meaningful, authentic, relevant, and tight videos. That is what the marketplace is asking for. So I thought I'll make a, a book and a program and that's what I'm doing with business. So you've got a program that goes with the book. How can people access the program? So uh, I can uh, either come into your business uh, or organization and uh, uh, work with, take your team through a training program and then do ongoing mentoring because a lot of it, this is about accountability. You know, you, it, it, you can tell people to do this and unless you create that space and, and help them through and hold them a, a, accountable, they won't do it. So there's, uh, there's on-site programs like that, yeah. but also with COVID, I put all that online now. And so all these programs are available online. And I've got to say, I've got to say, I actually think in one sense it works a lot better because people can go through the content at their own time and yeah. then you just have online um, coaching and mentoring sessions. And yeah. uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's just a nice way to do it, I found. Yeah. So who's your target market for this book? Who should read your book? So if you are a, a consultant or a solopreneur, a, a one-person band, and you're uh, out there running a, a, a practice, this is brilliant uh, for you because, you know, you need to make videos. But then it goes through all, basically all levels of, of, of business, small to medium enterprise. Everyone has to make videos. Mm. Um, larger enterprise, it, it depends who it is. In larger in, in enterprise, it's actually sales teams who need this because, the, you know, the joy of video, the power of video is it brings face-to-face -face communication right back to the start of the sales process. You know, like in a sales process, you know, you click on an ad and maybe leads to an email and back and forth and maybe a phone call and eventually a face-to-face -face conversation and maybe a transaction will happen there. Video takes that face-to-face -face communication that and puts it right back at the start of the process. And, you know, we look at people and you just go, you get a measure of the person yeah. really quick. You know, can I do business with you? That all important, yeah. no like, and trust. So that's why it's so good for, for, for sales teams. Um, and anywhere, he, here's how you know whether Get Video Smart is, is for you. If you looked your customer or colleague in the eye and said, would um, uh, I be a better communicator if I looked you in the eye? And if you answer yes to that, video is for you. <laughs> it's for you, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. And in terms of accessing you, how do people access you? Obviously, you're online. Just go to juliamather.com and we can access you. And That's you're on LinkedIn. It. That's the one-stop portal for me, <laughs> juliamather.com. Uh, and you can go on there and you can uh, uh, see, uh, you know, and what I actually, what I love doing is what I'm doing now, but doing it on stage. I love getting yeah. uh, kickstarting video in organizations because mm -hmm. here's the thing. If you're, if you're a leader or a manager out there or a decision maker, and you might be listening to this and going, oh, yeah, yeah, this is, you know, resonating with me. You try taking this back to your team, right? 
you mention this and I'll tell you what they're going to do, the porcupine defense. That's where they cross their arms and go into a little ball and protect that vulnerable part of yeah. them. And uh, you, you, you need to get them on board. And a great way to do that is, uh, you know, at an event of some sort yeah. and, get up and paint the bigger picture. Because people don't understand where video is going. It's got a really exciting future. Mm. It's all based around the smartphone too, by the yeah. way. Yeah. And that's what I like about your approach is that you don't need lots of equipment. You don't need to spend a lot about a lot of money. You don't need to look perfect. You just need to be authentic. And you're right. That's what people want. They want to know who is this person? Who is this organization? And how do we fit together? And the best way to do that is to show them. Yeah, yeah. And it is so true. Everything you have, your smartphone, if the smartphone you have now fits within four or five years old, the lens on it is better than the lens on the Hubble Space Telescope. So just for starters, if you're thinking my phone's not good enough, yes, it is. And then you with all your lumps and your bumps and your wrinkles of your life well lived are the perfect person to get on and tell somebody, and this is what it's like, just sitting at a coffee table with someone and listening to what their problem is going, oh, yeah, okay, I, I get that. Here's how I think I can help you. That's where video is very powerful in business yeah. these days. And you don't need to be somebody else. You need to be the person, you know, your, your, your uniqueness, your, your, all your individual fingerprints, everything that makes you you is your trump card. Yeah. So take it out and play it now. Stop trying to be somebody else. Have you got one tip that you would give people for something they could do immediately to get oh. them out there and actually use their phone? Gosh, yeah. Okay. So if you want to make a video to start, so um, people get scared about putting videos up because they think, what are people going to say and, and all that. So here's a great way that you can make a video and get started. Get your smartphone, put it to eye level, Rest it up against something so you're not hand holding it and aim to write a little script out, put some dot points, it doesn't matter. You just want about 60 seconds where you're gonna tell people, here's what I do, here's the people I help, here's how I, and, and how I can um, help you. And you make a little video, just 60 seconds about that. And then you add it in your email signature with a little link that says, what I do explained in 60 seconds or how I help you in 60 seconds. And you put that as a link in your email signature that goes underneath. Now, some people may click it, some not, but it's a gentle entry into putting you and your face on video out into the world. And once you do that and you realize that people don't ring you up and go, oh my goodness, how ridiculous putting people don't say that, you know, but what yeah. they might do is they might ring back, back up and say, Oh yeah, look, I saw, I, I looked at that. I didn't realize you did that. Could we talk about this? Okay. Uh -huh. Great use of video. That's fantastic. Is there an app that you would recommend for people for doing that? Or is that easy for people to do? Uh, look, it is. Um, it, uh, the, Oh, I just, I like, I'm stuck because I don't want to go down a rabbit hole with this. Yeah, uh, no. it, look, just get, get, get your phone. There, there, there's a simple app I'm going to recommend. It's called InShot, I-N-S-H-O-T. It's a free little video editing app. It's iOS and it's Android. It's a very simple editor. But all you need to do when you're recording that video is just record one line at a time. That's all. Mm. And then just go in and snip out the bits of silence and you don't have to do anything in between. It's perfectly acceptable to have what's called jump cuts, just where you finish a sentence and magically you start another one. It's quite acceptable now. So you don't have to, so you know what stops people? Immediately, if you're listening now, you're thinking, yeah, but 60, oh, how am I gonna get through 60 seconds? I'm gonna make some fluffs and fumbles. Just record it a sentence at a time. And if you don't like that sentence, do it again. And then take the best sentences, stick them together. Bingo. you got a 60 second video. And like you said, people want authenticity. They don't want it to be perfect. It's as if they were having a conversation. And when we have conversations, we fumble and we make mistakes and we use the wrong words, but it's okay. 
is actually an effect called the psychological effect or the pratfall effect. And it essentially says that if you're a person in some sort of, you know, you've seen, you know, to have some uh, authority or, or ability, if you go on and make a mistake, because people don't expect you to make mistakes mm. because, you know, you've presented yourself this way all your career. If you do that, you become more likable. And we do business with people we know, like, and trust. So actually going on and trying to be perfect is counterintuitive. Yeah. You're actually doing you and your potential customer a disservice trying to make perfect videos. Beautiful. Julian, it's been awesome to talk to you. Thank you so much again for putting your book in the library. People can access you at www.julianmather.com and that's where they can access everything about you. Your book is on there as well, I believe, and they can access um, journal articles that you've written and they can look about your training programs. Um, so hopefully people will, because as you say, this is what we need now. <laughs> Sending emails is so last century. It is so much. Thanks for the opportunity, Rebecca. My pleasure. It was lovely to talk to you. Thanks, Julian.